Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I have a couple questions. The first is, what is Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, otherwise known as ASMR? And the second question is, what is the relationship between ASMR and personality? So in this video, I'll go through the definition, the history, and the personality factors associated with ASMR. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So let's start with the definition of ASMR. ASMR is a perceptual condition where certain stimuli, known as triggers, elicit pleasurable tingling sensations. These sensations are typically relaxing. They are usually felt in the head and the neck, but may spread to other areas of the body. There are many different types of triggers. They can be visual, auditory, tactile, or olfactory. A few examples that we see would be drawing, tapping, whispering, observing slow movements, hearing repetitive sounds, and tasks that involve close personal attention, like hair brushing, applying makeup, or painting fingernails. Looking at the history, we see that the phenomenon of ASMR first became popular in 2010, but online discussions existed for several years prior to that. The phenomenon just didn't have a name at that time. Unfortunately, the condition became known as ASMR, an unscientific name, but now it would appear that we're stuck with that name. Changing it at this point would be difficult. There have not been a large number of scientific articles published on this topic. I used a few in this video. I'll put the references for those articles in the description. This is a phenomenon that is not well understood, and there is no formal description of it, but it does appear to be real. It is an experience that some people have. There is another similar construct referred to as frisson, also known as aesthetic chills or shivers down the spine. This is when somebody has tingling sensations brought on from an emotional reaction when observing something with aesthetic value. For example, listening to music. Let's look at the similarities and differences between ASMR and frisson. Similarities both tend to occur when an individual is focused on a triggered stimulus and both have a connection to emotion. As far as the differences, the tingling sensation from frisson spreads quickly through the body, whereas that sensation with ASMR tends to progress more slowly. The sensation from frisson comes from feelings of excitement, whereas with ASMR, it's associated with relaxation. Let's take a look at some of the characteristics that people with ASMR tend to have. Really, we only see two in the research literature. They tend to experience chills when listening to music, as I talked about that free song, and they're more likely to have moderate to severe depression. With those characteristics in mind, what does the research literature tell us about the relationship between ASMR and personality? To conceptualize personality, I use the five-factor model. I remember the big five traits through the acronym OCEAN. Openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. Not surprisingly, people with ASMR tend to be high in openness to experience. Now, it's important to note here at this point that I'm really talking about the traits because the study that looked at personality that I used only had the trait level scores. We don't see the facet level scores, which means the analysis really lacks the detail that I would like. It's difficult to understand what a particular score and a trait means without the facet level description. So when somebody scores high in openness to experience, we could say, well, they must appreciate art and they're intellectually curious. They invest in fantasy. They have a variety of interest, but we don't actually know that for sure just from that high level of openness to experience. It could be that a few of the scores on the facet level are particularly high, but other scores are low and the average just comes out high. So that's a real limitation of the particular study that's available here on ASMR. Now moving to conscientiousness, we see here the result was surprising. Individuals with ASMR tended to have lower conscientiousness than individuals without the condition. This doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. It's not clear why this relationship was discovered. 
Moving to extroversion, here we see that individuals with the condition tend to score lower than the general public. This finding makes a little bit more sense. Low extroversion is associated with increased analytical skills. We know that people with ASMR have a good ability to focus. They can fully experience visual, auditory, and other types of stimulation. Another possibility as far as this relationship with extroversion could be that because the individual has ASMR, they tend to focus inward. They get pleasure from that experience of ASMR. So it could be that the ASMR characteristics led to the low score in extroversion. They behave in a less extroverted manner to take advantage of the ASMR. I actually think this could explain the low conscientiousness as well. They may appear not to have self-discipline, but it's really because they're focused on those specific triggers. So they are distracted. They're putting their energy into something else. And people might think that that means they're low in conscientiousness. As far as agreeableness, we see a negative correlation, just like with conscientiousness and extroversion. This result does not have an obvious explanation. I don't know why people with ASMR would tend to score lower on agreeableness. With neuroticism, we see the relationship is positive. Now, this one is not surprising. Again, people with this condition are more likely to have depression. And depression, of course, is a facet of neuroticism. Also, ASMR is tied with responding to emotions. Therefore, it would make sense that somebody with the condition would be more emotionally reactive. Now, there are myriad videos on YouTube and other places featuring content designed for people with ASMR. Do videos like these actually facilitate somebody with the condition to have these sensations? According to the research, the answer is yes. People without ASMR do not respond or they're annoyed by these videos. People with the condition do tend to react. They do tend to have that feeling of relaxation, but they can also have a feeling of arousal, although not in a sexual way. Perhaps observing these different stimuli lead to both feelings of happiness and sadness, like we occasionally see with nostalgia. So in looking at all this, we see there is research literature on ASMR, albeit limited, that indicates that it is a real phenomenon. Furthermore, we don't see any evidence that experiencing the sensation associated with ASMR is harmful. So if that's the case, what is the controversy about? We see that there are members of the mental health treatment community and others who are unhappy about all these ASMR videos. I think the videos themselves really don't cause much problem. The difficulty is that some of the content creators make it seem as though the videos impart some mental health benefit, like they are a substitute for mental health therapy. Evidence does not support that claim. The reality of ASMR is that we really don't know a lot about it. It's a curious phenomenon that probably affects around 20% of the population, but the effect is not constant. Some people have a strong reaction and others may have a mild reaction that may go unnoticed for their entire lives. I've seen a lot of people worried that they do not have the response. They feel like they're missing out on something, like they can't be part of this new trend. They watch these ASMR videos and they are endlessly annoyed by them, finding the content to be creepy, frustratingly repetitive, and anxiety provoking. So I guess it would be like watching a movie featuring Rob Schneider, Pauly Shore, Owen Wilson, and David Spade. Well, maybe not that bad. Watching the ASMR videos would at least be survivable. There's a lot of variance in emotional and physiological reactions across the population. Just because a person can't experience a certain tingling sensation when some other person can, that really isn't a cause for worry. This reminds me of the controversy around the dissociative identity disorder videos, the DID videos. Now, I think DID is a real disorder, but it affects a very small percentage of the population. So we see a lot of people that engage with that content and they say things like, oh, I never knew I had DID until I watched a video. Now I'm sure I have these multiple personalities. Well, maybe some people who watched that content actually did have DID, but that would, again, be a small number. But we see a good number of people who watch the content seem to believe that they could have the disorder. I wonder if the same thing isn't really happening with ASMR, right? People see the videos and they think, well, 
if the videos are so popular and there's so many out there, this must be something that I have too. Part of it could be just a desire to join in, a desire to connect to a community that seems novel, that seems interesting and different. So that's how I kind of see it. I see DID and ASMR similar in that regard. Otherwise, the two constructs are quite separate, of course. There's not much overlap there, if any, between what's going on with each construct. There's no reason to believe that if somebody did have DID, they would be more or less likely to have ASMR. So we see that ASMR is really more of a novelty as opposed to a major breakthrough in the world of mental health. But for those who have it, it is an interesting experience and should be the focus of continued research. It would be beneficial, I think, to learn more about ASMR and what it's associated with, right? Maybe there is, down the line, some type of therapy that could be based on ASMR. The evidence doesn't support that now. We don't know enough about it, but who knows what the future might bring. So it's really about open-mindedness. It's not about saying, okay, we look at ASMR and we know everything about it. It's about looking at it and saying, we don't know hardly anything about it, and we should continue to explore the phenomenon. Those are my thoughts on ASMR. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.